This is a Grande Pacific production. From the top down, you'll get it right. Okay. All right. Today here we're here in uh, the city of Houston at one of the really truly great model railroads that has stood the test of time at the Great Great Northern Railway, and the owner of this prior railroad is Don Bozeman. So. Today, here at Don's house, Don's sitting in front of his great dispatcher's panel. Uh, how long has this railroad been in existence, Don? Railroad started in 1981. 1981. So we're going into, what, 34? 30 Slow builder. <laughs> Slow builder. It's not finished yet, but it is complete. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. I think that's an important statement. It's not finished yet, but it's complete. Uh, I had the pleasure of operating on this railroad. Uh, this is truly an operational railroad. Uh, we have somebody running a train around today and uh, we'll be taking a short tour of the railroad. But to start with, I'm going to give you some features of the railroad that are very unique to this house. The very dramatic scene of the trestles and bridges and mountain area. In what room was this? That was the dining room. This, ladies and gentlemen, was the formal dining room. We're in the front of the house. These are the steps that lead upstairs. Over here, we have Dick Snyder running a train. And this side of the house was the living room. So, there you have it. The living room and the dining room is uh, well occupied and put to good use. Right here, you're looking at the front door to the house, which with us several moves, Don can open up if necessary. One of his friends just stopped by and banged on the front door like he wanted to come in and he knew better, but he figured he would aggravate us. So. So we have a train here passing on the upper level. The train is now passing through Judas Mill. Up above you have the engine reappears out the tunnel. The PFE vintage about 1975. This Pacific Fast Mile engine? Uh -huh. Yep. Now that's a classic. I used to have a Pacific Fast Mail uh, sound system. So now the train passes over the in front of the front door.
until you get yourself to the point. One interesting aspect of this part of the railroad, which you're seeing happen, is it's actually going back and forth between the two helixes. Now, we're, to, we're going down the grade with getting to the different levels without totally hiding your train, which believe me, as all of us know in the model railroad world, this is a challenge. <laughs> dunking railroad trains into a helix and just they stay there forever is an issue at least at this point we have now dropped down uh, a good eight to ten inches and we're continuing to drop and other than just some very brief periods you don't lose sight of the train and that's the name of the game so you go across here, and as the train then goes into the tunnel, it will be gone for a few seconds. Go ahead. So down to picks this situation as what's called a ruptured helix. Not herniated, it's ruptured. That way you go back and forth from the helix to the other side, creating the scenery as the engine now drops and grade. This is the uh, model of the Cascade Tunnel in Washington, and it's uh, we have on the left the uh, big uh, air suction device to suck the air into the uh, out of the tunnel to take the smoke away, and of course you before the train can come out, you have to raise the door. So now the train can come out, and this is one of the unique features on the railroad and we'll come back to this in just a second okay so some history from uh, the Cascade Tunnel it's eight miles long uh, they accumulate an awful lot of smoke in there when a locomotive goes through they have to clear that for the locomotives to be able to breathe clear air and also so we don't kill all the people in the tunnel uh, so what they did was they established a fan system where at one end eight miles away the tunnel stays open all the time and they have this tunnel portal door at this end that goes up and down when they close it then they turn the uh, pump house on or the fan house on I'm sorry and it pulls all the fumes out from the last train that goes by in reality uh, it takes about an hour to clear the tunnel before another train can come through and uh, so that's uh, that's the way this thing works all right thanks Don that's a, a good explanation of uh, some things and uh, that you see in a couple places and uh, let's see if our trains gotten down to the tunnel
So now our train comes, we've gone to, down to the lower level, and we're coming back across the front door. One of the ends of the railroad is right behind the engine. And this is an interesting challenge. And I will admit that I failed the challenge. The track behind there is a gauntlet. And uh, only one train can go back there at a time. I knew there was a train back there, but the guy that was dispatching that day sent me in anyway. Well, you ever see Don crawl on the floor to fish cars out? Okay, well, you got the idea. But I'm going to tell you, we'll get back to this in a minute. A gauntlet track's a great idea for everybody's railroad. It really makes a challenge out of things. We're going past Middletown. And Fort Puget. Hmm. I think we have a car reorganization going on. Either that or they had another tsunami out of there in the northwest and the cars got washed into the bay. So I train in as a tunnel and goes underneath the engine facility. We'll be coming back up into the yard eventually here. But I think we have to make a loop around. This location, the train will eventually get back here. For those who ever get to operate back here, you get to go sit back there in that little hole and run the yard. One thing about it is no one bothers you. But the other thing is, you got a lot of work to do. So the interesting aspect here, so you understand how this works, is you come back around here in this direction to make the turnaround to head back to the yard on the track behind. Well, all the tracks wouldn't fit across the door. So to create something that's not unique, but only seen in a very few places in railroad world, is a gauntlet track. Four rails, two go one way, two go the other way. talk about some interesting cornfield meats with DCC. Uh -huh. So the train's going to go in that tunnel, back over in there somewhere, it's going to turn around and come back out. And as I learned the hard way, uh, you can only put one train at a time into the gauntlet.
So it's kind of a interesting setup with the switch. It's not actually a switch, but it's got a frog in it. Oh, look, a set of F units. Dug on. <laughs> Switched those right around the tunnel, didn't we? <laughs> That's when you have a few technical issues with some new things that have taken place. So our train is now off onto the other track and it's headed around towards the yard. Okay, now everybody can guess where we are now, so don't ever forget this sign. One last point that I need to cover on this railroad is that for an awful long time it ran on Dynatrol. 28 years. 28 years on the Dynatrol system. Well, as a lot of things in this hobby in recent years has gone, we had a service for it. It finally passed on last November. And Don is now a, a proud user of an NCE system, which he has installed. And... Uh, basically followed all of the simple rules that you need. He's got uh, a ProCab R uh, as the main controller and eight Cab 06 R's to run the railroad. So he's all set up. He's established a program track which I highly recommend. Layout program. This is the track right here. And you get to this point right here and you can see where the recent cuts were made. So this is the program track when the switch is thrown into the program mode. This railroad has four power districts and on each district he has an EB1. These are the LED indicators off the EB1 so he can see them in plain sight on his panel. Way well, does. Yeah, he's got a couple more UTP panels to install. This was the first one, and he will be putting some other ones in. This is a very effective installation. One 5 amp booster, command station, and another 5 amp booster. So he's got uh, 10 amps running on the system, and there's his very neatly mounted EB ones with his for his track bus. Uh, and uh, as breakers. So, all right, Don, in making the transition from the Dynatrol system to the NCE DCC system, uh, uh, was there any great difficulty you ran into? There were no great difficulties. There were some tremendous fears. <laughs> Uh, first of all, for an old goat to be changing systems at this time, but uh, I didn't want the railroad to die. My biggest problem to start with, I was concerned about detection because I've got 52 blocks of detection on this railroad and uh, they are the means that uh, the trackside signals work and uh, also show on the dispatcher board the location of the trains indicated by the green. Um, but uh, a little bit of study and, and I was able to convert what I had before which was Bruce Chubb's optimized detectors to Bruce Chubb's optimized detectors for DCC. And that only required me changing about four wires on the layout and my whole detection system worked. Otherwise, that would have been a monumental problem to redo detection on a railroad this size. But um, it was very easy to hook the DCC up, uh, just, just removed all the old Dynatrol, and the railroad was already divided into four power districts. So we simply put in the uh, control and the uh, booster and uh, added uh, four uh, uh, circuit breakers and we had our four power districts again. So it was that simple. Good. But uh, have, have everybody understand not to be uh, you know scared of DCC 
uh, you used NCE and uh, that's great and uh, I'm sure that it would also apply with anybody trying it in some uh, some of the other systems so uh, there we go thanks for spending uh, some time with us today and uh, we'll be uh, getting this together and uh, post it on the video and uh, I know that if you're in the Houston area in November each year they run a uh, open house schedule if you look uh, for the San Jacinto Model Railroad Club uh, um, web page, the tour is listed there, and Don's usually on the tour on one of the weekends. So uh, be uh, he would be welcomed. He would be happy to see you come by. I'm sure. So this will do it for this trip on another tour of model railroading excellence. Thank you.